Honorable Rector, thank you for the uh, presentation, for a uh, few words at the beginning. Dear friends, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, dear students, I am very glad to be with you. Uh, I'm also very honored because uh, my colleague from the Parliament, uh, Andreas Schwab, is together with us from the same committee because I spent uh, five years of my first term of office in the Industry, Research and Energy Committee and we were working together for five years. Well, um, tremendous and famous city Freiburg. Probably not all of you are from this city, but you could get used to live in this uh, city. I was told that uh, this uh, is a city with the longest sunshine in, in Germany. <laughs> Certainly, you have a sunshine on your faces. I see it quite visibly. And they are right, because all the forecasts were that today should be heavy rain in this part of Germany. Raining, heavy rain, but in Freiburg is a beautiful sunshine. So it's absolutely, I found it absolutely 100% true. Well, let me go to uh, one of the most famous daughters of your university, Madame Hannah Arendt. Arendt. She once said, political questions are far too serious to be left to the politicians. Well, it's not very polite towards the politicians, both of us, dear friend. Well, I would like to say that is not true, because maybe, yes, we will see also from our discussion, will be quite clear. So, as a politician, I take this as a challenge to share my thoughts about the future of European democracy with you. And also, uh, some discussion for me is very important. Yeah, because uh, it's always putting the questions, you are also giving the possibility for us politicians to recognize what is really the most important for our citizens. So your questions are of crucial importance for our work and for our activity. And uh, let me say that in this speech I would like to see our situation and European integration from a slightly different point of view than it is usually it's nowadays. Because we, we say that we are in a horrible situation from the point of view of the economy or financial disturbances. That's true, probably. But I would like to put a question of values and question of trust in the European Union. But of course we cannot avoid such a word like crisis. That was the first European Congress on ideas. European ideas a few weeks ago and it took uh, three days, heavy discussions and somebody counted the word crisis. It was absolutely king word for the whole discussion. More than 7,000 times was used in different uh, phrases, discussions. Uh, no other word was so strong, but also one word was almost as strong as crisis and used as many times as crisis. I would like to say it now, this word, because you must wait to the middle of my lecture. I will tell you the second most important word. But let us start from <coughs> crisis. Many think Europe is in the crisis today. That's true. They are right. At least in the original sense of the word. It is not without irony that we learned the word crisis from the ancient Greeks. The Greek word crisis meant 
in the first place, judgment or even decision. And the decision we have to make. I, it will not be an easy one. We have to decide to trust each other despite all that has happened recently. And the most important problem for us is really trust. Is trust something obvious? I would like to ask you. No, it is not. I would even say that trust amongst people is one of the most difficult things to happen. The history of mankind is a history of war and conquest, of slavery and oppression for thousands of years. One of the first books ever written was The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Perhaps in the past we had many reasons not to trust each other, but we chose to do so today for our mutual benefit. The principle love the enemy is also Christian value, I would like to underline. Is indeed the most important teaching ever made. Having seen the darkest face of humanity in our walks, first of all, we Europeans chose to apply this principle and enemies <coughs> have become friends, at least in the theory because it's not easy to, to change so much the meaning of the word and also to feel and to see friend in somebody who could be our enemy. Well, if Europe is in crisis today, it is because trust has eroded. That's my opinion. We need to gain it back. We need to remember our common values to make the right choices for the future. Besides democracy, freedom and justice, besides three of them, which are very important, it's also one other value, very, very important. And that was value and word second in this first, in this first um, Congress of Ideas. The word is very well known, it's solidarity. I must tell you that more than 7,000 times was crisis and almost 7,000 times during the whole conference was the word solidarity. Not peace, not prosperity, not democracy, not human rights. Solidarity. Uh, I think today is the most fundamental value Europe is built upon. Solidarity is not our destiny, it is our choice. Was it a bad choice? I do not think so. Against so many odds, our continent has changed for the better. But if there is a doubt, a look from outside can sometimes help us to see more clearly. From outside, let us say, from our neighborhood. It's more, very simple. How do they see us? When I visited Tahrir Square in Cairo in March, half a year ago, or Martyr Square in Tripoli just two weeks ago, one sentence struck me most. Thank you, Europe. We must stop for a moment and contemplate what that really means. There are people out there in our neighborhood who have risked their lives for our values, for our values, but today they are shared values, their and ours, not anymore ours only. They do not see Europe as a colonial power of the past. It's tremendous, but it's a model for their hopes in the future. Great, incredible change. 
I understand how they feel. I have experienced something similar looking from the other side of the Iron Curtain from my country under the communist regime. We saw what we wanted. When my friends and I were building the Solidarity Movement in 1980, we made our choice. And the choice was also to name our trade union Solidarity Trade Union. We made the choice of freedom against the regime which decided what, has, what was best for each woman and man. We made the choice of truth against a regime that lied to itself and to its citizens. We made the choice of solidarity against a regime that was built on intimidation. We stood up for our faith for our human dignity and our human rights. And we changed the face of Europe at the end, not using the power. Uh, I can even say that the uh, communist regime used power against solidarity for a few years with martial law, but it was not helpful for them at all. So I only want you to, to underline, I would like to underline uh, the meaning and the power of our values. Sometimes we are looking at values and we try to find solution. Well, in the economy, in social decisions, they are very important. I would like to say no. I would like to neglect anything. But maybe from time to time we should also remind ourselves of our values. Those in our neighborhood who share these aspirations must be assured of our solidarity. We have the unique opportunity today to expand our way of life, not through domination, but through the promotion of our values. We need to help democratization in our neighborhood and beyond. We need to make an honest offer similar to the offer Europe made to Germany after the end of the Second World War. It was not an offer of a united Europe, but generally speaking, uh, first decision in 51, 57, was a Rome, um, uh, was a, a Rome treaty. It was just uh, incredible, fantastic decisions. Offer of solidarity and cooperation instead of war, and similar to the offer Europe made to Greece something like 40 years ago, Portugal and Spain, maybe not 40, 30, 33, Portugal and Spain 25 years ago, after the end of the dictatorship in all these countries. And similar to the offer made to the whole of Central and Eastern Europe when we found our freedom. Of course, we cannot offer full EU membership to everyone, but we can offer true partnership, which is also very valuable. I can assure you. Partnership based on shared prosperity and in the future perhaps a shared sovereignty in certain policy areas. The community method which has made Europe the strongest economic power in the world can be applied elsewhere. We need the three P's in our neighborhood. Peace, prosperity and partnership. Partnership, important. We should treat them as a partners. Very important. I think now it's even easy for us. For you, young generation, it's certainly very easy. Peace, of course, we need peace. We need uh, um, democracy, stability. But there is no long-term democracy and stability without prosperity. So if I say three words, I add prosperity, because people in those countries, in each country, in all of us, in all of our countries, they, they also would like to achieve prosperity. Dear friends, let us keep ourselves still uh, to the topic of values. Today, we also have to live up to our own values. Values that are such a beacon 
of hope in the world. We have to renew our European social contract. We have to rebuild the trust among ourselves. That trust. How will European democracy look like in the 21st century? How can we cope with the challenges ahead? These questions are indeed too serious to be left to politicians. Let me add, to, to be left to the politicians only. We should discuss all of us, but not only politicians. There should be not political decisions only. Our democracy relies on the free choice of free citizens. It relies on you. The level of individual freedom of we enjoy today has never been seen in history, but this freedom has also led to deep complexity. The most important point in this complexity is quite simple. All of you, four billion citizens in our globe, are as perfectly and as well informed about everything as politicians are. First time in the history, four billion citizens on our globe could use, not necessarily using each day, could use internet and uh, to read everything about the market, about the spirit and uh, recession, hopes, and they're going to buy something or to sell or to invest. Depends on general spirit and atmosphere all over the world. So we are guiding and governing our economy all together, all the citizens, taking everyday decisions. Should I invest? Should I buy a new car? Should I sell my flat because I don't have enough money to send my, my children to the university? It depends on, on market and all the information on in TV. So it's our common responsibility today. So this question should not be left for the politicians only. We should think about them together. It's just a good possibility today to exchange some views. We need to develop a new model of governance that relies on direct links to citizens at all levels of integration. This is what we call subsidiarity. Political decisions have to be taken at the level which is most appropriate, most appropriate. Our EU should only act in those areas where the nation, the region, a city or a family cannot find the answers. But sometimes, like in energy issues, the best level to act is European level. Subsidiarity works in both directions. We always say, as many as possible responsibility down to the cities, to the regions, from the national level. Sometimes the best possible solution is to shift responsibility from the national level to the European level, the European Union level. I will show you some examples. Because it's very important, it's also subsidiarity rule. Subsidiarity rule doesn't work in one direction only, in both directions. How much Europe do we need? I think in most policy areas we need rather more than less today. Because of globalization, of course, it's a very good reason for that. Let me give some examples. Does anybody really think, still think, that we can create better results with 27 dependent diplomacies. Dip diplomacies, diplomacies. How can we make human rights count in our foreign policy if some world powers can play one EU member state against the other EU member states in trade or investment talks? This is why I think that foreign policy should be a fully integrated EU competence. In today's world, it is an extension of our internal market. The same applies to environmental protection, energy, as I said, trade, 
development and other sexual policies. I'm not saying about such a thing like prevention climate change. It's really a global issue. And for the global issue, 500 million citizens of our continent are much stronger and influential than each country separately. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can imagine, I believe in the merits of parliamentary democracy. We all can be proud to have established the first directly elected supranational parliament. I firmly believe that we have to pass from a Europe of diplomats to a Europe of citizens. It doesn't mean that it's the end of diplomacy, but you are influencing politics and diplomacy as well. Much stronger way than it was any time in history. I am convinced that the European Parliament is one of the best places to do so. We have achieved a lot over the last decades. The great majority of EU laws and regulations have to be adopted by the European Parliament today. We are more and more becoming a bicameral system, similar to federal states uh, like Germany, with the Council as a, as a state chamber, maybe something like Bundesrat, and the Parliament as a citizen's chamber, Bundesrat, not quite the same, of course, but more or less. We still have to go a bit further. We need to give citizens a real choice about who should run our union. As a first step, I wish that all big parties run a common top candidate for becoming president of the European Commission at the next elections. I also wish that in the future all European commissioners will also be candidates in European elections. Elected first as members of the European Parliament before being elected to the Commission from or between of members of the European Parliament. We do not need to change the Lisbon Treaty for this, and it would grant the Commission greater legitimacy, and all the Commissioners greater legitimacy. We should also have national political parties run with the laws of the European parties, so that citizens know who has the majority in Europe. <coughs> We should also use all the potential of new technologies to create the links amongst us. In this sense, I invite you all to connect and interact with me on Facebook or Twitter, for example, but in my colleagues from European Parliament as well, and many others in the Commission, commissioners, almost all of us, we have at least Facebook or Twitter. Together we can create a true European civic space true European civic space. I'm just proposing you quite technical solutions. Because from one side, we should feel during the election, because which moment in our democracy is the most important from the point of view of democracy? It's pre-election. Once or four years, five years, doesn't matter. Sometimes uh, it's not as early election could be in two years or three years, but usually four years. Free election. And for the whole period for four years, regional level, municipality, we say, we have elected you, you must govern. That's all. So, there are some proposals which are connected to the free election in Europe. In European Parliament, European Commission, because we would like to feel that we are united, more united. We need to be more united today in a globalized world. If you would like to, to answer questions and threats, which are so obvious for our citizens, and they need us to answer their expectations, we should be more united. Because everything is coming to Europe from outside. Even crisis was imported originally from the United States. Let me let me let me be quite serious about that at all. And few last remarks. We you remember 
probably the paraphrase by Winston Churchill. Very well known. Democracy may be the worst form of government, except all those tried before. Well, we don't have anything better than democracy. And true democracy is never easy. It takes time to build a consensus or even majority. Majority is much easier than consensus, of course. This is why it seems to work slowly. Parliamentary democracy. As I said at the beginning, solidarity is not an obvious choice. But like democracy, it is the best one. We must, we must have a choice. And we always have a choice. On the road of European integration, we cannot leave anybody behind. That is solidarity. If some state wants to move slower, it is our responsibility not to exclude them. On the other hand, it is a responsibility not to stop us moving ahead. Solidarity and responsibility on both sides. Not to stop us moving ahead. We must discuss and we must try to convince. But we should always keep respect of each other. Our EU is a community of destiny and a union of choice. In order to make it ready for the future, we need to rely more than ever on the trust and participation of every single one of you. It means one of us. Every, every single one of us. Let us continue to trust each other. This is our privilege to make such a choice. Choice on trust and solidarity. And I am quite sure it will work for your future, young generation future. Thank you very much.